Welcome students to another episode of Mr. McMahon's Classroom. Hello students, this is Mr. McMahon and today we begin our first unit of the year which is going to be on Hunter Gatherers. And this comes from standard 611 which is explain the characteristics of hunter gatherer groups and relationship to the natural environment. So we're going to take some time to learn about hunter gatherers and let's get started. So to begin with what is a hunter gatherer? So number one, they were people who hunted animals. In second, they gathered wild plants, seeds, fruits, and nuts in order to survive during what we call the Old Stone Age. So that's why we call them hunters and gatherers because they had to hunt and gather to survive. So what are some characteristics or what are some things you would use to describe hunter-gatherers? Well, bubble number one, they lived during the Old Stone Age. This was a time period until about 10,000 years ago where people use stone tools. Bubble number two, they were nomadic people, which means they migrated or moved according to the seasons from place to place in search of food and water. They did not live in one place like us. So if we look at bubble number three, they migrated. There were no stores. They could not go to Lowe's or Food Lion or Walmart to get their food, and they did not have knowledge of farming. So they migrated or moved to follow the animal herds for their meat and other uses. Again, they gathered fruits, nuts, um, other types of plants for their diet. And again, migrate means to move from place to place. So how did hunter-gatherers, since they didn't have a lot of knowledge, how did they adapt to their natural environment? Well, we know the natural environment is our climate, our weather, and our natural resources where we live that affects our survival. So think about here in South Carolina. It's August, it's hot, it's humid. So what do we do to adapt? Well, we're probably sitting in air conditioning right now, so we adapt or change our environment. So bubble number two, what does it mean to adapt? It means to adjust or change to a new situation. Right now you're adapting to sixth grade. You are changing to a new situation. So one way they adapted bubble number three is they made some simple tools. They made these tools of stone, of bone, and wood. They use these simple tools to create shelters to hunt and make clothes. So what are some of these types of tools that they used? Well, if you look in bubble number one, this was a bow and arrow. And they use this to hunt animals from a distance. Bubble number two, you'll see that it's a spear. They would have thrown these at animals from a long distance, or as you see in the image, they would have come as once the animal had been um, attacked and was close to dying, they would have come in with the spears for a final kill. And in bubble number three, they used choppers to cut, chop, scrape roots, bones and meat. So what are some technological advances of hunter-gatherers? Well first what is a technological advance? It's where people fashion tools and machines to change and control their environment. Think about the technological advance you're using right now. You're probably watching this video on an iPad or a laptop. You're connected to Wi-Fi and to some type of network. So you're using a technological advanced computers but we're talking 10,000 years ago. So what are some of their technological advances? Well in, in bubble number one you notice these are stone tools, and so they used the, the inventing of stone tools or tools made of stone was something brand new. Bubble number two, the invention of fire, or they discovered fire, and they would have used this fire for cooking, for light, and for protection to scare the um, animals away. And in bubble number three was cave art. Now, um, hunter-gatherers did not have a written language. Right now, we're watching this in English. They did not have a written language. They used cave art to express their ideas. And it allows archaeologists and other scientists to study their way of life. Um, these early hunter-gatherers left hundreds of engraved, drawn, and painted figures of deer, bison, horses, other animals. They used this cave art to tell stories and explain things. And they did some other types of art, too. They used carvings of stone, ivory, and bone. So what about the roles of men and women? Now, um, you're going to watch another video that's going to go into a little bit more detail, but briefly, the role of men in hunter-gatherer societies was to uh, hunt in large groups to bring down large animals. And the role of women in hunter-gatherer uh, societies was to gather nuts and berries, keep the fire going, and to watch the children. Okay, another thing about the time period about the Stone Age, they also lived during what we call the Ice Age. The Ice Age was 1.6 million years ago. It's when the Earth began to experience long periods of freezing, causing glaciers to cover much of the Earth. And if we look at bubble number one, we know that hunter-gatherers originated in Africa. 
And from Africa, about 100,000 years ago, they started to spread out to other continents, Asia, Europe, North America, and South America. Now, when they got to Asia, how did they get over to North America? If we look at today, it's called the Bering Strait. It's 50 miles of ice-cold ocean. You couldn't swim it. You can't canoe it. So how did they get there? Well, because of the Ice Age, a land bridge formed, which connected the continents of Asia in North America. And what the hunter-gatherers were able to do is they were able to walk over this land bridge. And it joins modern-day Russia to modern-day Alaska. And we call that Beringia. Now, once the ice age ended and the ice melted, the migration ended. So, sixth graders, quickly in review, uh, hunter-gatherers, they hunted and gathered. They hunted animals and gathered wild plants, seeds, fruits, and nuts in order to survive during the old Stone Age. I'll see you next time on another edition of Mr. McMahon's Classroom.